All right. Thanks, guys, uh, for jumping in. Uh, today, we're going to have a kind of a general call, and there are so many things to discuss, but let's try and identify things that we can throw into individual discussions and individual calls for the teams responsible for it. And again, there, there, there are no specific teams that are responsible for something. It's still in process of self-organization. So just brace your, yourself for some uncertainty there. Um, so one of the first things that I put on the, uh, on the task was uh, discuss current blockers and how to make progress within individual tasks. And uh, before we jump into the individual team uh, reporting, I just wanted to um, kind of uh, showcase uh, some patterns and some uh, actions that have been, uh, you know, evolving that I see as, you know, amazing. So one of the uh, core things that I wanted to share was that uh, vaccine and therapeutics uh, document that I've, I've seen today. I'm not sure who created it, but it's just an amazing showcase that there is some structure that can be emerged through a collective effort. And there's not necessarily one person that is capable of doing that, but just a bunch of people ideating, brainstorming, and then some, uh, you know, catalyst that comes in and just says, oh, okay, I, I see some structure, I can put together a document, and then all of a sudden it all makes sense. And this is the pattern that we're seeing. As you can see, there is a general task roadmap that actually outlines machine learning tasks, which is exciting. Uh, there is deliverable summary table that talks about some very specific things that I have no clue about. But you know, every task will have their own uh, kind of modular knowledge that uh, we'll be seeing uh, as a result. Then there is, uh, meta-analysis something and then there is this amazing uh, showcase that the goal is to create some form of knowledge graph and visualize all of these things that don't make sense to us yet but they will soon have some sense and some structure so yeah this is the way to go obviously the structure will be very different for um, different tasks as daniel mentioned geotask doesn't necessarily have the same form of um, you know roadmap or deliverables or even you know NLP tasks so I highly encourage everyone to find the structure that works for them and just try to to put it into some documents hey, Arthur, uh, this is Dan Sosa I'm the one who created that document for me this is just a way to kind of put my thoughts on paper and have everything make sense and then splitting it up into these sub subtasks makes delegating and starting to get interest from the general chat, uh, really tangible and starting to think about NLP involvement, uh, ML involvement. So I'm glad that you guys like this, this document. I hope to start assigning tasks today. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, the other thing that I kind of noticed was the, uh, the, uh, the lack of connectors between the individual teams and tasks and people that are getting onboarded or already exist without a very specific task. And I would highly encourage someone or maybe groups of people to try and take the responsibility of connectors, just um, you know, being present in one of the couple channels, seeing what challenges people are facing and uh, plugging people from the general channel that are just getting onboarded to help with those specific tasks. I've kind of uh, tested it with a couple of people yesterday, and it seems like a good way to, to do that. Obviously, this is primarily team leader responsibility, but as we see, there are so many different things that team leader is focused on, like Maya is trying to bridge together different people working on NLP tasks, uh, enrich the risk factors and all other stuff, and it's impossible for them to also go into general channel and see who, who may uh, provide help to, to them. So one of the examples, like right now, there is this need to visualize some intermediate results. Um, the risk factor has some a need for vis visualization, and I'm just not sure like whom to reach out to. So maybe we can find these connector types of people that can help us uh, do exactly that. Uh, Mike Honey asked us to connect uh, him after we have some CSV files. 
So it's just a matter of one intermediate step to uh, go over the code, make sure that what we've got makes some sense, and then contact Mike Honey and then get the visualiz uh, visualization, sorry. Sounds great. All right, so um, do you guys have any other uh, you know, general blockers before we jump in into the uh, leader, uh, team leader reporting? All right, I think we're good to, to proceed then. Um, uh, maybe Maya, can you start with the risk factors quick report? Uh, yeah, we basically, as you can see, we have some pieces of code. And even though initially we planned uh, to make a piece of code for each task, however, I can see from uh, the initial uh, uh, from the initial um, request posted on Kaggle that tasks might be repetitive. So what I basically want to do uh, is to build some kind of you know general uh, code for uh, topic modeling that uh, requests some certain uh, keywords. We, we, for example, for each topic that we research, we have a very good list of keywords. Uh, so we want to build some kind of a general uh, document that allows us to research on the papers that contains the keywords that we want. I want it to be in abstract and in the uh, uh, body text for us to be able uh, to easier sort the relevance afterwards. Uh, so at the moment, we're kind of collecting pieces of code. So we need some, some general code to be created. And, uh, uh, and from, from <clears throat> that point, we will be able uh, to finally collect all the papers we need, start uh, basically uh, relevancy sorting, and from that jump in some in-depth analysis, do you, if it makes sense. Do you have someone that can help you with, with this task? I really hope that Clara can, but uh, no, I don't have anyone specific to put the things together at the moment. Maybe Brendan could be of help here. Um, ah, that's lovely. Uh, cool. <laughs> Thank you. I'll send you everything you have at the moment. All right. Cool. Sounds great. I'll, I'll try to intermediary uh, jump in and also uh, figure out how we can help showcase this amazing progress because we already have topic modeling. And, and it, it is producing some results for different stages of diseases. So it's a question of now assessing the quality of that, fine tuning and exposing that to people to validate if, if this makes sense. Kind of generalization, kind of uh, covering all three tasks that we have because it's not only viral diseases, it's also stages and mm -hmm. uh, degree of complication. So kind of covering all three of them and then we can jump, yeah. Sounds good, all right. Daniel? Uh, just a quick question. Is that po that code uh, posted somewhere or can some of that work be shared across teams? Yes. Uh, it's posted in our uh, trailer card and just uh, talk to me um, kind of on private and I will add you and you can access it easily. Great, thanks so much. Oh, no, 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 I think it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be great. The more we can figure out how we start getting some reporting going, uh, so that each of the teams can see what's working well for the other teams. That's gonna gonna inspire, I think, each team. Exactly. Um, and I I wanted. I'm sorry, but I, I've I've thought about it. But I wanted to make sure, first of all, that we have some uh, solid pieces that uh, actually does anything, and then kind of you know <laughs> starts the sharing process. It's it's that balance between you know showcasing some progress because I I do think it's a huge thing for other teams to see that hey it's possible to create something from nothing. And it's, it's important to share even if it's uh, you know, barely meaningful results. So I do think we'll, we're gonna create some place for teams to uh, share progress asynchronously, uh, even if someone is not on the call today, like Christine wasn't yesterday. And I don't think we've got any update uh, from that task on transmission. Um, some place where we can store that update day to day. Maybe Mark can figure uh, out a way to, to centralize that. All right, uh, Daniel, do you want to uh, go ahead and introduce the, the quick summary for Geotask? Sure, so I would say we have pretty good progress. We have found a few other very interesting data sources. 
Uh, so maybe I can go through point by point. So about extracting meteorological data and more precisely temperature and humidity data um, around the world, uh, we are essentially trying to set up um, productive level code that will then upload to the to the general GitHub. Uh, at some point, we would like to think about having a server where we can you know, run it uh, periodically, like once every couple of days, and uh, automatically upload to the um, repository on, on Kaggle. So have a um, updated uh, time series. Um, then uh, we are working on obtaining more granular um, contagion data for the US. Right now we have uh, um, county level information about number of cases and number of deaths and we also have uh, information at state level about number of tests uh, positive and negative uh, that have been done so which I think would be very useful information um, we are at good point I would say in extracting this data then we have we want to um, aggregate it together have a single time series um, or maybe to it, it a bit it depends on how well we manage to merge data and then the goal would be to upload that one as well and then we have a couple of people working on demographic data sourcing like population density in various areas and so on that could also be a factor in transmission um yes so i uh, we also have one person that starts today working on uh web scraping news to get a time series of uh, social distancing measures in various countries. That's also an important factor. Any needs so, blockers people needed? Well, we certainly need more manpower because we have so many potential sources and uh, not so many people to work on them. Uh, also people with experience in uh, automating task uh, pipelines and uh, I think we, making we, we're getting cleaning code putting it at level of uh, really production let's say where we can really run it comfortably yes. and good practices and so on uh, so my useful. article my uh, story about corona y got republished on hackernoon.com and i think we're getting some interesting people that are not necessarily ai specialists they're joining us uh it would be great if you could kind of formalize those needs who you're looking for and again share in that private channel on team liaisons and for us for mark and any other people to understand how how to find those people and, and connect them with you yes sounds good yes yeah, sounds, sounds good all right then uh, do you want to leave the uh, quick summary on the vaccines task uh, yeah, sure. So, hi, everybody. Um, so, I just joined a couple days ago, and I think that our task got things started maybe like a little bit later than the other tasks. So, we're still kind of setting things up, um, just getting our bearings. But, um, yeah, as we saw, I worked on getting that kind of projected deliverables and like our goals for our task, and then breaking that up into subtasks that can be delegated out to people. Um, Things that we're going to start working on today are like drug extraction and like drug treatment type relationships to see which like drugs are being considered for corona treatment. Um, we're also going to start working on annotating for generating data for machine learning classifiers. So figuring out a good workflow for getting annotators on board. Um, and then just, yeah, like I said, soliciting out to the general team to get people to help out with some of these tasks. Also, Anton and I had a really good call yesterday and we talked about all things kind of GitHub related. So we have a good sense of what kinds of permissions people should have, what kind of structure could exist with a kind of common GitHub repo for each task. And we have a, a workflow that we think will be a good, at least first pass of things. And then we'll, we'll update as, uh, as we figure out what works and what doesn't work. Sounds great. So to, to, to piggyback on that, on that we already, need like a dedicated member from each team task team who will be responsible to essentially adding people to repos so just kind of like have not not will be responsible but to have the permissions to actually do all of that so 
all of the team members think think through like who will be like the guy who will grant and add people to 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 your to the repo that you all work on. And I think yeah. that could be Dan for uh, vaccines task, Daniel for geo task, Maya for risks task, and I think Christine for transmissions. But let's uh, or somebody they delegate it to, and who would they talk to to uh, get those permissions? So either reach out to me or Dan. Uh, uh, it we essentially we'll do it like once. We'll just set up and that person simply have like the field on GitHub repo of adding members to essentially like GitHub team that will simply have writing permission to the repo. So instead of just working with, you know, just like more like straight workflow in terms of, you know, branching out, etc. Everybody else could still contribute even from outside world easily via like a peer, uh, what is called pull requests. It just like we already come up with a more streamlined process of the actually like the core teams that working on tasks and so on. And I think this is a good task to delegate to the, I've seen talk about like each task will have a principal investigator. So I think this is a good like place to fill out that top down structure and, and give them that job as we Sounds decide great. that. Sounds great. And do we have anyone from the transmissions task joining the call? or anyone that is in that channel and see is seeing some progress. Okay, not really. Um, I think it's a priority for us admin team to figure out like what's happening there and just like either find person that can be that catalyst that Dan for, for that task or, you know, either jump in ourselves or, or actually like cut that task off if we're sure that it's either very hard to find people for it or it's way too unstructured, maybe reformulate that task into a more specific one and unbundle the subtasks. Let's, let's figure it out and take some time today to do that. All right, sounds good. Uh, the, the next thing is I put the NLP needs for each of the tasks, similar patterns, modular pieces like uh, NER, and that's primarily asked to Brandon, I think, um, to kind of guide us in, in the direction how we can accomplish that. Uh, I put five minutes for this discussion, basically for a quick summary, how we should approach that, or the people that you need to accomplish this, and yeah, just let us know. This is super crucial. This is super, super, super crucial. Where's the document? <laughs> There is no document. That's the problem. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. If you have questions about NLP, what we're getting out of the text data, let me know. Um, I f finally have enough computational power to get everything done. All of the metadata, all of the named entities labeled by what kind of biological entity they represent by like organ tissue and DNA and viral structures and stuff is all going to be labeled. It's coming out in the next 24 hours or so. So nice. I, sorry I for the wait, but it's coming. <laughs> That's not full text though, right? That's just abstracts? That'll be full text, abstracts, titles, figures, and tables. Oh, awesome. And where's, the, where's that computational power coming from? Uh, one is from a work computer that they're allowing me to use, which is nice. And then the other one is, uh, and then I have two servers uh, provided by members that I don't, I don't know if I can share them publicly, but um, if you need uh, NLP power or something like let me know and I can contact you and contact them. So that's it's a great it's a great example of, of creative thinking about where to get your computational power as well, and that's something we can all be doing while we're waiting for uh, for larger stuff to come in. Yeah, I just kind of made a call for it. I was like, hey, I really need this processing power like as soon as possible. Can anybody help me? And a couple people reached out. So, do you have any access to GPUs or need for GPUs? Um, if we're going to use BERT models, then yes, I need a GPU, but at the moment, I don't think it's necessary. So uh, depending, uh, it just depends uh, if the models that we have at the moment are not going to be good enough, then uh, BERT would be nice, but at the moment, no. Gotcha. Just to clarify. Um, on the subject of uh, getting compute power, uh, have folks seen the article that was posted about the foldable protein project soliciting donations of machine time? Yes. Okay, so I, if, if we become desperate and in that position, I, I wonder if that's an option we could also exercise. 
Yeah, I think that one is more about distributed computational power versus, um, you know, access to single like machines. So mm -hmm. could be a way if we grow to that extent and we figure out a way to, you know, be like Bitcoin and basically use <laughs> anyone's computers to mine some insights. But yeah, great idea. Um, so two points of computational power that are like, I, I think super important to stress right now. First, when Daniel said about being creative using computational power, please don't use computational power that, that you have access to, but don't have permission to use, you know, like your work computer. Only if you have explicit permission, do that because it will run into big issues if people will run around using whatever like lab computer they're using in their work or something. So don't do that. Creative means as Brandon or, you know, somebody else, uh, definitely reach out to me because I'm consolidating some efforts in terms of, you know, getting computational power. Second one, if you have computational needs, start kind of figuring out what your needs are in terms of like, okay, I need a GPU. How big GPU instance should be? How many GPU kind of, you know, GPU should be on your instance, etc. Because we'll need those kind of, we need to consolidate those requests and then reach out to either AWS or IBM or Microsoft, etc. So all of the big cloud providers definitely have initiatives to help teams like ours. But in order to get through them, we will need simply specific ask, right? Like we need this. Otherwise we'll be channeled into pipeline of apply here, apply there, and nothing will get done. We already kind of tried to do that, already kind of get lost in the process. So we need like specific requests what people need. Uh, so Sounds great. And in terms of the, the ask for this kind of the NLP needs for each of the tasks, um, maybe someone who has NLP experience, and maybe that could be Clara as part of working with the risks task, of creating a document that actually explains what are the shared needs and how we can you know unbundle those needs into modular pieces because it sounds like the work that you're doing brandon is amazing but we're we as organization are failing at communicating what exactly that is for which purpose and how to integrate it efficiently sounds good can I propose a really quick solution for just the crosstalk? Um, can all the leads, uh, this is an ask for all the leads to, to direct message me who, who the second most effective person in your team is, and I'm going to start delegating tasks to those people with uh, due dates. And those tasks are going to be how to get more crosstalk between your groups. Sounds great. I don't think it's a good idea, actually. Why? Uh, because um, when you start you as for my observation, uh, it's something subjective that I've noticed. Uh, it's not an absolute truth, indeed. Uh, but I've noticed that if you start like kind of um, setting very strict borders, taking into consideration that we all are kind of uh, volunteer peoples, it's kind of create a stress that results in non-delivery. As for my experience. Uh, uh, which which part are you responding to? Due dates, I guess. Okay, fair, fair. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, I'll take that part off of it. I just want to, I'll be I clear. Agree. That the point about it is to be, I will be clear. That's all. Yep. Sounds good. Uh, the next point to discuss is more about the uh, discuss medical expert integration and update from Natalie Steve. Um, if you can give us a quick summary of what's uh, happening there, your current progress and blockers, any other help that is needed that we can source. Uh, yeah, so I've been, um, I have a few calls I'm going to make today. Um, I, I was in conversation yesterday with a virologist who directed me to this epidemiologist at Yale who's working, um, you know, the, as much as he can without a lab to work in. Um, but he seems to be really amenable to talking later. Um, and then, so I have, I have a lead there. I'm not sure exactly when I'm getting on the call. I'm waiting on his schedule. Um, but I am also going to be um, hopefully talking to a few people in the Department of Pathology and 
lab medicine at, at UCSF. And um, they have a really good sense of what's going on right now and what their needs are. The idea that I'm going to ask each of these um, individuals is um, like, what you know it's something that i that i i asked the virologist yesterday like what is your great challenge right now in trying to navigate everything um which is hopefully an organic way of of learning what needs are and learning what the limitations are right now um you know i'm i'm nervous about i i don't want to squander the uh, opportunity to talk with them before i have like an ask in terms of what would be most beneficial in terms of having some sort of product for them um, to have. But I am kind of surveying a sense of, of what needs are. The other thing that was I was intrigued by uh, that Anastasia brought up is um, having a blog post. And I thought it might be a good idea if, you know, in thinking about content for that blog, interviewing various epidemiologists or virologists who are on the ground and doing work, just to get a sense of like this more public facing uh, dilemma that is happening so that we can then integrate our work and showcase how that's, you know, affecting and could aid frontline workers. So that's where I am. Um, I was also debating, I, um, I have a few people who are in New York right now, frontline doctors. I'm not going to ask them anything because they're going nuts, but I do know that it is worth reporting on some level on. I'm not sure what that's going to look like, but I do, I do know that they're working around the clock in such a way that's, um, you know, uh, pretty scary to anyone that's outside of New York. So um, right now, yeah, I'm just I'm just kind of gathering my contacts, and I'm going to be putting them in a contact sheet uh, that I sent to Anastasia. I know that she wants to do uh, more with uh, develop social media and publicity publicity and development. So uh, I think we're going to work together on on a document with the kinds of experts we need to be speaking with uh, and potentially who they are. I, I'm a little loath to share like their names unless they have my permission or, or they, I'm sorry, I have their permission. Um, but in, in general, just having a sense of like, what experts do we need? Uh, and who among those experts wouldn't mind talking to us in some capacity? Sounds great. Sounds like you're making tremendous progress. Thank you so much. I, I do think that, you know, the assumption that we are, um, we should be taking as a group is the fact that the most occupied people right now are actually the frontline doctors, but there are so many of other people like virusologists or epidemiologists that are sitting there at home and don't have a place to actually contribute and work and we can you know essentially make use of, of their brain power uh, at, even like interviewing them and giving us a quick heads up on what matters and what people we should be talking to sounds great. right because the the thing that i i learned yesterday from a, a, at least a few people that i've been speaking with is that they they have to right now rely on literature like they don't have any other means it's all a priori work right now so um labs are down and they're just twiddling their thumbs well they're not they're they're sweating bullets but we can maybe help them yeah have sounds something. great yeah and the last piece that i want to include on this call is the critical piece of uh, visual onboarding of for new people and we've talked about this briefly on the project man program management call earlier today. And I think we're making some progress and we're gonna share with everyone the current structure, but basically it's gonna be a very simple diagram uh, to guide new people, whether you're technical or non-technical, uh, here's where you go based on what you are in terms is of- this, Is this what we were talking about? Yep. Can I share my screen? Go ahead. Uh, how do I do this? Cool. There we go. 
All right, can you guys see this? Yep. Okay, so this is what I'm... Amazing. Something like this, uh, um, uh, you know, if anybody has really fast feedback, um, feel free to throw it at me, but this is what it's roughly gonna look like. If this is like glaringly terrible, somebody say so in a direct message. Um, but this is what he's talking about. All right, now how do I stop showing you what I'm doing? <laughs> I think you can take a screenshot and share in the program, program management and everyone can contribute to, to that. Sounds good. But yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's very quick. Uh, it's gonna take 10 seconds for the person to navigate themselves from the very beginning to the end point. I think it's also important to include the person that they should be talking to because I've myself included uh, myself on a couple of Trello cards to ping me and people are very eager to reach out to a person versus a general you know, Slack channel uh, because that is overwhelming. Everyone's talking about a lot of stuff and you're not sure like if you're talking in the, in the right place and environment. So dedicating individual for each of these kind of the endpoints is also crucial. Uh, you're muted. Right. Uh, two, two things are gonna be on this. One, um, it's gonna point people to a channel, and then the other is to point them to the team leads. If you guys have any suggestions on that, let me know. Otherwise, the idea is to throw them right in the deep end, and then the expectation is team leads pass them right on to that second in command, or maybe I might route it sh straight to the second in command. So that's uh, the idea. Well, where, where do we see this uh, visual representation? It will be on the Trello page or? Is... I'll, po I'll post it. You'll post uh, it's it not up. up yet. Yeah. Uh, so I've uh, seen the Trello board on the left hand side, there are a lot of uh, sub boards. Is that the sub board that, we are that Tina was talking about or is that uh, it's just a work in progress? It's work in progress, I'm sure. We're kind of bridging, we're currently trying to create this uh, universal index of everything that we have and make sure that uh, you know people can reach any of the documents that they need, but also not overwhelming people with you know hundreds of different Google Docs and only sending them to the ones that they actually need at this specific time. So it was like I've been just like hanging around this, these calls and Whenever I go to the Trello board or the stack, uh, there's too much of an overload of a lot of information coming in. So it's difficult. Yeah. I think it's very difficult. So if like Mark can put it in a very structured way, yeah, it would be better to uh, get all these people to work on a specific task. That's Agree. That's the challenge we're trying to solve today. Yeah. All right. And we still have Oh, we don't have any time for, for Q and A's, but if someone has a very quick question, we can help answer. Please go ahead. All right, I think we're good. Thank you so much for jumping on the call today. I think we're making amazing progress on all frontiers. Um, let's jump into individual uh, discussions and proceed on the action items discussed. All right, sounds good guys. Thank, Thank you. you, bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you guys.